Hi, I'm Rebecca Hamilton, and I'm here today with my colleague Katie Weatherby, and we're both with Key Ministry, and we're happy that you tuned in to Inclusion Fusion. We're going to talk a little bit about bullying, and um, particularly in the church setting, and um, we think typically of bullying, Katie, as um, an issue in the public schools. So um, why are we talking about it at a church workshop? You know, I thought it was interesting that um, in one article that I read recently, the researcher said that this issue of bullying is really a profound public health problem. And I had never really thought about it that way, but it really is. It affects kids physically, it affects kids emotionally, and and it also affects them spiritually. And I think because all of the research is so overwhelmingly pointing to the fact that kids are bullied on a regular basis, that adults are not noticing it, and that kids with special needs are bullied at rates that are so much higher than their typically developing peers, I really feel like the church is the place that we do need to talk mm-hmm. about it because wouldn't it be something if the kids in our programs at church were then going back to their public schools and making a difference mm-hmm. and, and that teachers and staff members were noticing what's different about those kids, mm-hmm. they're so kind. Um, and and we could point to the local church as saying, you know, they they're really taking a lead in this issue. Mm-hmm. I think it's important to really pinpoint um, what we mean specifically when we talk <clears throat> about bullying. Do you have a working definition that you use? Right. Bullying is really about power. It's about gaining it, maintaining it, and exerting it on others. And so when we think about bullying, we need to think about negative behavior that results in ma- gaining or maintaining power and that causes pain or humiliation for someone else. Mm-hmm. So that's how we're going to couch it for for the purposes of this talk. Right. When um, <clears throat> What is the research telling us about um, bullying specifically when it comes to kids with special needs? Well, first of all, we know that in the typical population, about 30% of the kids report that they are bullied on a regular basis. 10% of them, um, of, of all kids, own up to being the bully. Mm-hmm. And we also know that of the kids that are bullied, 60% of those kids will say that the adults are not intervening or doing anything about it. When we come to examining what's going on with kids with special needs, the rate of kids who are bullied is almost twice that Mm -hmm. of their typically developing Mm -hmm. peers. Excuse me. Kids with special needs are easy targets. They may act differently, they may look different, and we need to remember that developmentally, a lot of kids are focused on being the same. Mm -hmm. They wanna be like everybody else, and so differences are are not something that they want to accept. Um, Kids are at greater risk for bullying when they look typical, but their behavior is different. Mm -hmm. So that's, those are the kids that we really have got to watch out for, those hidden disabilities. Right, like autism, anxiety, those types of things. Exactly, exactly. Is there a a bully profile, so to speak? Is there a way that we could identify bullies in the crowd, typically? Well, I I wish that we could. Mm The research on that um, leads to the fact that that's just, it's really not helpful to say, okay, this is the kind of kid who's going to be a bully. Mm -hmm. Um, Some research used to say that it was the kid that was kind of the outcast and then would try to push his or her way back in. Um, Other research said that it's the more popular kids um, in the social hierarchy. There's, There's a current study that points to the fact that it's the kids that are sort of in the middle levels who are trying to gain more social acceptance. Mm -hmm. Um, So we really don't know for sure. Um, And it's, um, it's really, again, it goes back to that issue of power Mm -hmm. and the kids that are wanting more social power. So it really isn't helpful to us to to boil it down to one type of kid. Right. Mm -hmm. In the church or youth group setting, Mm -hmm. um, what can we do to prevent bullying from happening? That's a great question. The, The one thing that is really important for us to do is be really good observers. We've got to watch out for what's going on with kids when they're in unstructured settings. So during the times that they're filing in in the morning and they're hanging out with each other, maybe playing a game before worship starts, um, on retreats when, or, or church camp, when there's not a directed activity in the hallways after church, those are the times that we're really going to see what is actually happening with our kids socially. And it's important to remember that 
preventing bullying is really about being all about the small stuff. We're watching for these tiny behaviors with, um, uh, there's a, a great book by Keltha Crow, um, and she talks about calling them gateway behaviors. So they're they're not really actually bullying behaviors, mm-hmm. but they could be. Um, so things like saying, you know, hearing one kid say to another, "Oh, you don't have a cell phone yet." Oh, you're kind of a baby. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really not bullying, but depending on the reaction that that child gets from others. Um, if they laugh, if they encourage, that gives the child who's making the statement a little more power. Mm-hmm. So those are the kinds of things that we really have to watch for. The other thing that we can do is to create a culture that the kids are really participating in the management. So at the beginning of the program year, identifying the rules of the classroom, three or four rules stated in a positive way. For example, we're kind to each other, we share our materials, we take good care of the church, and our actions please God. So that when we see those kinds of behaviors, we can pull a child aside and say, hey, it it seems to me that you're having trouble remembering our rule about kindness. We're we're not pointing the child um, and saying, well, you're being bad. We're pointing them back to, you agreed on these rules. Mm -hmm. You helped make these rules. That's how our class functions. That's how our church functions. Mm -hmm. Um, We also know there's great research out on um, how peer training affects this issue. When kids are trained to understand other kids with disabilities, by and large, the kids with disabilities are more engaged and they are included. Mm -hmm. We also have to remember that even when that happens, even when we have a really good peer training, kids with autism are getting fewer phone calls from their friends. They're invited to fewer events. They're not seeing their friends outside of school. And that's another area where the church really can step up and and try to include kids during the week that aren't getting included. Inviting someone to sit with you in the cafeteria at lunch or if kids are going to the football game, trying to give another kid a phone call. And Mm -hmm. that takes some adult direction for sure because that's not easy for kids. Right. Also, when we do group activities, when we go on retreats, instead of saying, okay, everyone pick your own group, it's important to think through the kids that might work effectively together. Mm -hmm. For kids who are being targeted, pick your own group. It it just strikes fear into Mm -hmm. their hearts because they don't feel accepted. So it's important to make sure that kids are placed into groups that are going to be workable and edifying for other people. And not to put the same groups together all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think that that's another really important thing. Finally, using kids' names. God knows our name. Mm -hmm. And we want to underscore that we are a body together, emphasizing those differences. You know, in in school, it may be all about being the same and wearing the Ugg boots and everyone having the Mm -hmm. same phone and the same jacket. But in church, we want to emphasize that we are the body of Christ and everybody can't be a hand and everyone can't Mm -hmm. be a foot because we all need each other and that differences are a great thing. Mm -hmm. So that can be a really big difference. Those are great points, Katie. And even despite our best intentions, bullying sometimes happens, even at church, we know this. Um, How can we intervene once we see it happening? Right. Well, and and going back to those those rules that the class Mm -hmm. set up and using very neutral language with kids even if it's a whole group activity and and the teacher is hearing some kind of gateway bullying behavior. I notice that some people in our room need to review the rule about using kind words. Mm -hmm. We use kind words in our room because that helps everyone to feel better. Mm -hmm. So that's an important thing to do. Um, If it's persistent in a classroom, it's okay to exert some discipline and to say to a child, I can see you're having a really hard time remembering to use kind words. So at rec time today, I'd like you to stand with me and we're going to observe for some kind interactions so that we can really Mm -hmm. review that together. So it's educational. Um, It's not humiliating Mm -hmm. to the child. It's not like you're making the child put his nose against the wall or anything like that, but it's reinforcing back to that classroom culture, this is the way we treat each other, Mm -hmm. and this is church, and this is how we're going to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, So those kinds of 
of things are very, very good to do. We also need to remember, um, it used to be that the, the big intervention for um, bullying was to teach the child who's bullying assertive words and phrases to say. And really, the research does not bear that out as being the be-all, end-all solution. We've got to really edify the bystander. That's really our key. Mm -hmm. So helping kids and bolstering them to say, leave so-and-so alone, or you're not using kind words, or you're, you need to remember to be nice to people in our classroom. And, and reinforcing children when they come and tell you mm -hmm. Bobby's me being mean to Jennifer. Instead of saying, don't tattle, right. saying to them, I'm so glad you reported that to me. So we're not emphasizing tattling, mm -hmm. but I appreciate that you are reporting that to me and then making sure we follow up and observe to see that that's happening. Yes. Your title, Sticks and Stones, Clicks and Phones, um, really indicates the role of social media in bullying. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that? Mm -hmm. I heard a speaker uh, named Rachel Simmons who wrote a great book called Odd Girl Out, and it's about female aggression in girls and teenagers. Um, and she said, you know, it used to be that kids who were bullied could go home and have a break from all of that. And she said, now the bullying happens 24 hours mm -hmm. a day, seven days a week, because it's not just on the playground. Kids are texting. Kids are Facebooking. They're um, gossiping. They're tweeting mm -hmm. about other kids. And there is no relief in sight for those kids. And we really need to address that not only in our families, but in our churches as well. Having kids follow the rules for social media. If, if a child is not old enough to be on Facebook or MySpace or Twitter, then the church should not be communicating with kids that way mm -hmm. because they're not emotionally ready for it. And it teaches them that breaking the rules is okay. That also sets kids up whose parents say, no, you can't have it until this age. Well, you're a baby. You know, you don't have a Facebook. We yeah. all have a Facebook. And, and that leaves kids out. Mm -hmm. So having a real clear-cut policy that is inclusive and teaching kids how to use that as mm -hmm. well. Um, I love it when youth group leaders are friends with kids on Facebook because they really get a sense of mm -hmm. the social climate. And I think that's really helpful, too. Mm -hmm. Well, as with any um, issue, we need to include parents in this process, too. How can pastors and youth leaders accomplish this when it comes to bullying at church? Well... When we get a report from a parent that the child is being bullied at church, it's important to really listen. Don't bring in knowledge about um, what happened three weeks ago. Listen to that event and, and be really open to hearing what the parent has to say. Um, even if you know that um, you're not observing the same thing, agree to observe to watch and listen and report back objectively what you're seeing. Um, knowing that we as, as church staff and youth leaders and Sunday school teachers, we don't see everything and the parents don't see everything. So this is a great opportunity to build a bridge with a parent and say, let's work together on this. Mm -hmm. um, and then make sure that you do circle back with them. Um, it's really hard for a parent when they report, gee, I think my child is really being left out. No, that doesn't happen in our church. We mm -hmm. include everybody. That shuts down communication. Mm -hmm. Whereas if we say, let me look into that, we certainly don't want that in our church. And and then really looking at it objectively, ask a colleague to come and look at it as well, mm -hmm. because that colleague might see it through different eyes um, and have a different opinion. Um, when the child is the bully, for example, mm -hmm. and we observe behavior that we don't want to be seeing and we need to report it to a parent, we need to make sure, first of all, that we're calm. Our, our emotions have passed. It's not a great idea to call a parent when we're fuming because another child in the program has been hurt or rules have been broken. Calm down. Report only what is observed. Don't say your child is a big bully. You can report. I'm noticing lately that when we have discussions, your child, Alex, is making comments such as, and then listing out the comments, that makes me concerned because I'm afraid that that's hurting other kids' feelings. And I'm also concerned that that might be a liability for Alex's relationships. Have you noticed that at home? Mm -hmm. 
make sure too that the that the parent knows that you're going to handle it in church, but that you just wanted to include them in the process. Mm -hmm. This is on my radar. I'm handling it, and this is how I'm going to handle it. I'm going to pull them aside, and we're going to talk about it a little bit, but not um, asking the parent to discipline at home. And then report back when something is going well. Mm -hmm. We always want to lead with something positive with parents and close with something positive because when we are talking with them, that child is their most precious mm -hmm. treasure. Mm -hmm. And it takes a while to process difficult information mm -hmm. on this issue. Yeah. Those are all great tips. Katie, thank you for joining us today. Um, we're very lucky to have you. And we're glad that you tuned in for Inclusion Fusion, and we hope you'll catch some of the other segments as well. If you have any questions or comments, you can tune into inclusionfusion.org, and there'll be live chats and things like that going on throughout the duration. And we're glad you joined us. Thank you.